the main symptoms that I guess are hard or uncomfortable to experience during the day is just the coughing, the having a hard time breathing. Um, as far as a baby goes, I was in the hospital with pneumonia uh, quite a bit when I was really little. I wasn't diagnosed till I was two. Um, and we actually had to move to Indiana for them to diagnose it, which is kind of crazy. But um, the CF is picked up through a sweat test versus a blood test because our sweat is so highly concentrated with salt because of the way that the mucus blocks the way that the salt is processed in your body. So when I sweat, um, like when I exercise, when I work out, I sweat salt. So it has a little bit of water in it, but it's really salty compared to your sweat. So when kids are really little, they actually just do a sweat test on them and they put them in like this little bubble thing with like the thing and I don't, I don't know how to explain it very well, but they test how much salt the baby is sweating when they're really hot. Um, and that's how they diagnose CF most of the time. It can be diagnosed um, like in utero, and I don't know all of the details on that. It's fairly new as far as, I mean, it's probably been out for like 10 years, but as far as I'm, I'm concerned, um, it's a fairly new process and I don't know a ton about it. Um, I do know that I have a little sister that they were able to rule out that she didn't have CF um, when my mom was pregnant. So I do know that um, they are able to do that kind of thing now. It used to be totally just sweat test. But anyway, that's how you figure out if you have CF. <laughs> um, so I guess that's also one of the symptoms is salty sweat. So it, it kind of stinks because you get like your pores are open and then you get salt back into them. So it kind of like stings sometimes. Um, that's another symptom I guess that I have if I'm working out or stuff like that. There's just a lot of things that go along with CF. So like... A lot of cystic fibrosis patients have GERD, for example. So I have like heartburn problems and I have to sleep raised up. Um, and then there's, I don't know, there's just so many, a lot of us have asthma too, so we have to be careful what we're around because that can trigger things. Um, we have, a lot of the meds that we take um, lead to other problems. So, <coughs> um, and some of them are rare and some of them are more common. There's one medication that's an IV that I won't take anymore um, because it leads to autotoxicity, which is inner ear poisoning. And I've had lots of fun times in a wheelchair um, that I don't really want to repeat. <laughs> um, and then there's like the Pomazyme that I take, I do take it twice a day. Um, I've had friends that that's led to lung bleeds and they can't take that anymore. Um, and so a lot of the meds end up giving you side effects. There comes a point when you just are like, okay, well, I'm on this medication for this and this medication for this and this medication for the side effects of this medication because <laughs> otherwise I can't deal with life. <laughs> um, and even then, like when I'm hospitalized, uh, I get really nauseated on the medications and my body's gotten so used to some of the basic anti-nausea meds that I can't even take them anymore. I have to take the more complicated ones that like knock me out <laughs> because that's the only way I can really get through the day without just totally puking the whole time, which is not fun. So 
a lot of it is a lot of the things that I deal with are originally CF related and then there's a lot of things that come with the wonderful scientific advancements that we've made are not perfect. So there's a lot of things that come with just dealing with the things that we have. So science and technology has come a long way in the last little while towards being able to deal with CF. Pulmazyme itself is a fairly new invention. Um, hypertonic saline is something that I don't take, but that a lot of CF patients take. Um, that's also fairly recent. Um, a lot of a lot of the drugs are coming through the pipeline nicely. Um, Orcombi and Kaleidico are two ones that are in the news a lot more than others, I guess. Um, Kaleidico was awesome, and I had a friend that took Kaleidico, and it's helped her a ton. Um, because what it does is it targets the gene mutation that originally causes CF um, and tries to reverse it. And so a lot of the symptoms totally decrease with Kaleidico. Um, the problem is that that only affected about 4% of the CF population. Because there are a ton of different mutations that can cause CF. So that's another thing that not a lot of people know. Um, even the common test that you do to see if you are likely a carrier of CF or whatever, the most common one only tests for the most common 96 mutations that cause CF. So there's actually like a thousand or so. <laughs> so um, it's... CF varies a lot from person to person because there's so many different mutations that can cause it. Because there's so many different things that cause it, um, there's so many different varying levels and things like that. And even if you have the same mutation, it's not exactly the same. So my sister and I both have the same two mutations that cause cystic fibrosis. But our symptoms are not <laughs> exactly the same. Um, I have a lot of problems digesting my food. I, my body's super picky about what digestive enzymes I can take and stuff like that. But she has gastroparesis. She can't even eat half of the food that I eat. Um, and her lungs have historically been worse than mine. Um, we're getting to the point where we're about even. But, <laughs> um, it, it's just one of those things that, is totally different from person to person. I've met people that were diagnosed with CF at age 40, and I'm like, how is that possible? Like, literally, how did you live your life? Because I would have been dead. Because I probably would have been dead. Um, because my mutations are a lot worse um, in some aspects than others. So I wouldn't have been getting nourishment, you know? And you can only last for so long like that. It's interesting to see the varying levels of CF patients and that there really is a wide range of, of symptomatic stuff. You know, some people aren't diagnosed until super late. Some people, when they are diagnosed, they only have part of the problem. So they may only have the pancreatic insufficiency part of, part of the problem or they may only have the clogging up the lungs problem, you know? Um, and so it's really hard to blanket term CF because it's just so wide and varying.